Hello everyone. In this video I'll be installing the modified 2AR FXC engine into my Toyota MR2 Spider. So far the engine and chassis have been prepared for the install. There are some things to assemble and button up that are easier done after the motor is mounted. The car is lifted as high as my jack stands can go. I have about 6 inches of ground clearance below the motor which is enough for me to slide a pallet underneath for extra precaution. Because I didn't want to set my engine down and reattach the straps, I decided to undo one strap at a time and slowly work the engine towards the center. At the same time, I'm reattaching the same straps from the middle of the engine bay. This method took longer, but meant that the oil pan wasn't going to be accidentally dented if I rested the engine the wrong way. As for the two mounts, you want to bring the right side only a few inches from the body mount, then position and install the left one. For the right mount, you have to align the holes before inserting the bolt. If you just send the bolt with a hammer hoping for it to line up, it will damage the metal insert. So take your time and get it right. You don't want to install the front mount bolt just yet, as you want to push the engine forward as much as you can to get enough room to install the coolant hose. I just wedged a wrench between the motor and firewall to keep it from realigning and closing the gap. Now this part is difficult. It took me a few tries to get this right, but before you install the silicone coolant hose, you have to accurately cut off the right lengths off from the hose. If you are about a centimeter off from the amount, you will find it almost impossible to install it. On the chassis side, you want to leave about 2 inches of tube from the center of the hose. On the engine side, an inch needs to be removed to allow fitment. Of course, now is a good time to install the heat sleeving. Before realigning the motor and installing the mount bolt, you need to slide in the AC compressor. This has four bolts that go into the custom bracket. Now the mount bolt can be installed. The rear mount is stuck on the cross member, so that goes on later. Back to the top of the engine, and we'll install the other shift bracket. This one needs a hex wrench, and as I mentioned before, this will only work with the shorter version of the starter. To properly install the new shift mechanism, I first replace the old shift line bearings. These just need a flat head to be removed. The new clips go on both sides to keep the metal bearings in place. The first shift line to install is the one responsible for back and forth movement. The shift arm on the transmission needs a wave washer on it, then the shift line can glide down over the shift arm. Then another wave washer, a regular washer, and a retention clip. Now for the horizontal shift line. This is tough to slide in because it's a bit short. The shift arm that the line is installed on now needs to be assembled. Same washer pattern as before. There will be play in the assembly, but that's normal. This piece now bolts onto the transmission. This bolt does need Loctite, as there will always be a force undoing the bolt every time you shift. Now the chassis shift line gets connected to the mechanism, same washer pattern as before. The mechanism is completed by finally installing the arm onto the transmission. Before finalizing the install, the adjustment bolts need to be calibrated. As I mentioned previously, I installed the small center feel correction inside the chassis, which makes this step easier for me. I just have to keep unscrewing the bolt, half a turn at a time, and shift from inside the cabin. After numerous adjustments, the 3-4 gate is easily shifted into when the shifter is at its center. Now the shift mechanism is completed by installing the retention clip. Now the fuel line can be hooked up. The two adapters get tightened with different size wrenches and there shouldn't be any material on their threads. A snug pull should be done to see if the AN fitting snapped onto the fuel rail correctly. To connect the alternator wire, the metal end needs to be flattened out so that it can be inserted into the fuse box. There is a very small plastic notch that I took off to make it easier to bolt in. After feeding the cables through the firewall, they all simply get hooked up to the body controller and chassis. The other main coolant pipe has slightly larger hose clamps and it's made of rubber instead of silicone, so it's easier to install. It's better if you slide the hose clamps on it first. Then connect the starter wire. This may look short, but it's just long enough to reach the battery once you mount it on the cross member. Since the reservoir is a different size than the engine port, you will need a 5 8 to 3 8 barb splice connector. For the T, you can weld your own or buy it on spider trap. The water bypass hose, this may seem difficult to do, but all of the hoses and clamps you need for this can be reused from your 1ZZ engine. Now for the brake booster. This hooks up to the rightmost port on the chassis hard lines. You'll notice that I don't have an evap line, 
Now you remove this and plugged it as I won't be using it. You need about 45 inches of hose and the other end goes to the right side of the intake manifold right above the PCB line. Now you can install the mass airflow sensor, tube and bracket. The sensor bolts onto the tube and one of the screws on the bracket bolts into that third hole in the ECU bracket. The other spots bolt onto the chassis mount. The intake tube is the shorter version from the 2AR Camry. It has the purge valve opposite to the MAF sensor, but the harness is able to reach it just fine. Now I'm installing my wideband controller. That area right there is a convenient spot to mount the controller and looks really nice. The right hole already has an insert you can use, but for the left I just bolted on the bracket hard line that I removed from the EVAP line and with the tension keep the controller in place. And now for the serpentine belt. I had to try several belts to get the right length and it's that part number. I found it easier to install around it. I found it easier to install it around the crank pulley first, keeping the edges of the belt in place behind these small extrusions. Then I routed it around the compressor, alternator, water pump, and then finally the tensioner. What I'm doing now is hooking up the hoses to allow the purge system to work. Since the Haltech has a manifold absolute pressure input, I'll be connecting it alongside the system. The ECU port goes to the small nipple just underneath the throttle body. The purge valve goes to the purge hard line on the chassis and T into the PCV line that goes into the engine. You can use any generic quarter inch T. That T hooks up to the other side of the purge valve. As you can see, my dipstick just barely touches this chassis. However, it's still removable. And that's all for this video. In the next one, I'll show how I mounted the stock battery with a Honda battery holder on some convenient inserts in the crossmember. I'll also connect the rest of the electrical wires, properly bleed the clutch, and hopefully start the car. Thanks for watching.